What's happening? What's good? What's going on? Part of my presence YouTube channel. I want to do a follow up to my previous video regarding my thoughts on the Tyree Nichols case and the fact that five black officers were charged with second degree murder, along with other multitude of crimes uh, regarding the being death of Tyree. And one of the things that I highlighted was the fact that a lot of the, the DAs and the officials, the mayor, um, Bankrump, they were all hyping up the release uh, of this uh, video. They were talking about how it's going to be released at 7 p.m. or after 7 p.m. on Friday, how it's going to be all of the footage. The level of savagery is so high that it was disgusting. Uh, it's disgraceful. They have four different angles. Like, they're really hyping up this video, making it seem like, like how a rapper does when he hypes up his mixtape or his next project. How, you know, he put all his effort into it. He took time to write rhymes. He got five different producers. And he has music for everybody, whether there's gospel, whether there's people who want to party, whether there's people who want introspective stuff. Like, they're really hyping up all the attributes of this video. And it was kind of odd to hear them do that. So I really didn't know what to think regarding this video, but it really felt like they're trying to steer the public into a certain direction and to have a certain reaction to it. And the other thing that I said was that I felt that these five black officers are going to be made an example of because I, I, I didn't really see any public support for them, especially from the usual suspects, right? That usually always support the police no matter what uh, they're accused of or no matter what evidence is available uh, that says that police officers should be condemned for any crime that they they commit but um because no one was publicly supporting them i really felt like they're going to be made an example of and that they're going to be railroaded and after 7 p.m on friday when the video dropped i saw it over the weekend and i saw multiple um sources of the video a lot of it was edited a lot of it was the version that didn't have all the cuss words going on and stuff, but I was able to actually find uh, a better video, the full version, the unedited version. And I really have to say this, the body cam footage from the police officers, it doesn't show much because you don't see the actual beating of Tyree Nichols. What you see is that uh, there's two encounters. One encounter starts off a little bit funny. It starts off with an officer coming out of his vehicle, running after another car, and another officer is already at that car, pulling Tyree Nichols out of the vehicle. It doesn't show why they pulled him over. It doesn't show like how usual um, footage would show is how a police officer is trailing a car, a car makes an illegal turn or runs a red light or commits some type of traffic violation, which warrants the arrest or which warrants them pulling over the car. But you don't see that. All you see is them pulling Tyree Nichols out of the car. So that's one thing that I realized that they're, they're not really coming clean with. They, they never show why he was pulled over and why they took that level of force by dragging him out of the car. Now, the other thing to that first encounter is the fact that Terry Nichols, you know, was asking why were they arresting them or what they're doing. And the police officers are trying to arrest him. He's struggling to uh, break free and one officer decides to pepper spray him. As a result of the pepper spray, uh, it backfires on the police officers and it, they get, it gets in their eyes and Terry Nichols frees himself. There's a little bit of commotion and then he starts running away. Now, the thing about this is that everyone knows that if you are innocent, you should not be running away from the police, right? Now, again, I'm not here to fault Tyree Nichols, but we have to be honest about this. He shouldn't have ran. The reason why I say that is because what he did, he ran away from two officers, two reasonable officers. He ran away from those two reasonable officers and ran into the arms of five unreasonable officers because what happened after is that they caught up with him and when they caught up with him they beat him severely and that is where the street light footage comes into play because it's not the body camera footage that we see it's the street light footage which i guess is the other angle that they're talking about that they're hyping up which pretty much gives a bird eye view of what actually transpired because when they caught tyree nichols they beat them pretty badly. Uh, again, I will say that they were beating them trying to get his hands behind his back to arrest him. But the thing is, Tyree Nichols was around 6'1", 
145 pounds and these other five officers were all huge officers uh they're in the prime age they're between the ages everybody from what i understand all the officers that appeared on the scene they range between the ages of 24 and 32 and a lot of those officers had um, a background in football they play college football uh, so on and so forth so they're very strong and what ended up happening is that once they arrested Tyree Nichols and they had him in handcuffs one of the officers decided to beat him throw haymakers at him and pretty much hit in a defenseless Tyree Nichols who has his hands behind his back in cuffs and that's when you know they they started beating him uh, at that point to the point where now he can't defend himself whatsoever and it's really unjustified now what happens after that after they beat him so bad that he fell to the ground they dragged him and they put him against the car to prop him up now in my opinion in my belief i think this is where things went truly wrong because for the next 20 to 30 minutes no one did anything they didn't beat him, they didn't touch him, but they also didn't render aid. When the EMTs came, they looked at Tyree Nichols and they did nothing. They didn't provide any level of care. They didn't look at him and say, you know what, this guy's been beaten pretty badly, he's unresponsive. We need to get an ambulance here and take him to the hospital. No one did or said anything. All the other cops were all around talking about the event. Uh, talking about what they did they chased them from this angle once they caught him they beat him here they threw haymakers they're all congregating talking about what they've done one officer is smoking a cigarette and, and and it's almost like a a gathering of young men talking about what they did that weekend it was crazy to see and the weird thing is that the emts are there and the emts are not doing anything they're just looking at them and it's not like they're intimidated. It's not like the cops are over them, telling them, oh, don't help them. The cops are, are off on the side, talking it up. And the EMTs are not providing any level of care. And in those 20 to 30 minutes, I did not see an ambulance pull up at all. Now, the EMTs, from what I understand, they weren't fired. They were suspended. But in my opinion, they should have been fired, along with those other five officers that were uh, that were the ones who caught Tyree Nichols and the ones that beat him uh, and subdued him, they were fired as well too. So I think that all of those people that contributed to his death should have been fired. Now, I will say this, many people were trying to hype up this video and compare it to Rodney King. Number one, I don't wanna get into the suffering Olympics here, okay? So I'm not gonna say which one was worse, but what I will say is that the Rodney King video, if you look at that, the police officers were in no way, shape, or form trying to detain or arrest Rodney King. All they did was take their batons and started wailing on Rodney King. In the defense of these five black officers, what they were, quote unquote, attempting to do was to get Tyree Nichols in handcuffs. But what they did is that once they got him in the handcuffs, they beat him more. And then they did not provide any aid whatsoever. It's just uh, unfortunate that the result, the end result is that Tyree Nichols, oh sorry, the end result is that Ronnie King survived his beating, but Tyree Nichols did not. So in other words, there's a higher level of culpability when it comes to Tyree Nichols' case. Now, unfortunately, the officers in Ronnie King's situation were found not guilty they were exonerated from all the charges and i believe they continued to remain on the police force they were not fired so i don't know what's going to happen with these five officers in memphis but based on what everybody's saying and based on the reactions from other police chiefs from other regions even the police chief in toronto made comments saying how it was disgusting uh they, they, sh they should be ashamed to be police officers uh memphis uh chief did the right thing by firing them and pressing charges i've never seen such a level of support a unified support from everywhere in regards to these things especially from other fellow officers normally when things happen uh, officers keep their mouth shut but in this case there's a resounding support to show that these officers did the wrong thing and i found that quite unusual
The last thing I want to comment on on the actual video was after they've arrested Tyree and they propped him up against the police car, you know, they started to congregate and talk about what transpired. Some of them are talking about their injuries that they sustained. Some of them are talking about the fact that their eyes hurt from the pepper spray. And others are talking about what they encountered, how they ran after him, they chased him, they beat him down, they thought he was on drugs. All of the things that they were discussing, right? Some of them were swearing, uh, cursing, using words that are unprofessional. And it just had me thinking. So I remember a while ago uh, regarding the Rayshard Brooks case, right? The guy who fell asleep in the Wendy's drive through and then the police came, they tried to arrest him and they tasered him, didn't work. He ran away and then they shot him. Here's what I, I want to say in that footage of those two officers, once ambulance came on the scene and other officers came on the scene, they told the cop not to say a word. Don't make a statement. You have 24 hours to recollect, to relax, to regroup, and you can make a statement within 24 hours. That is the rule that officers are afforded. They don't have to give a statement right away. But these officers, in the case of Tyree Nichols, they started running the mouse on camera. And they knew they were on camera. And they didn't care. And apparently there was a sergeant at the scene. And that sergeant showed no leadership skills because not one time did that sergeant say, hey, stop talking about what happened. Because everything you're saying is either being recorded or going to be used in documentation. And I believe that they didn't do anything because they didn't think that he was going to die and they were going to just sweep this under the rug. And apparently these guys are from the Scorpion unit, which is supposed to be some type of hardcore unit that goes around uh, the Memphis neighborhood and they terrorize people and they get, uh, they're, they're pretty much hard nosed to get certain criminals. So you can see how this kind of fosters a certain type of environment where police believe that they're justified in taking these type of actions. And when you hear that, then you have to realize that it starts from the top. So I found it strange that people like Ben Crump the mother of Tyree Nichols, and also the media have been praising the police chief, CJ Davis. They have been praising her in regards to her swift action in firing those five officers, the swift action in making sure that these officers are charged. But again, what I don't understand is that this is a unit that is, again, all under her because she's the head and this is also a unit that had previous complaints filed against them. And some of those same five officers were named previously in complaints about their behavior, about their excessive force, and nothing was done. But yet the police chief is being praised for disbanding that particular unit when they should have done that earlier. And if they had done it earlier, none of this would have happened because those officers would have been off the force or those officers would have been changed and put into different placements where they wouldn't be able to terrorize the people of Memphis. And then again, because they didn't show the beginning of the video, it's quite possible that they had no reason to pull Tyree over. In other words, they should have left him alone. They had no premise. And that's probably why they threw in that charge of kidnapping, which I found kind of weird. How does an officer kidnap you, right? But clearly it's kidnapping if he was never supposed to be arrested to begin with. And that's very sad. And I think that we shouldn't just stop at these five officers because again, those are the bottom level. It always starts from the top. Leadership starts from the top. And the sergeant who was at the scene, who apparently, according to what they're saying, no one was over the age of 32. So that sergeant also didn't show any leadership skills, didn't make sure that Tyree was, a, was attended to and had the ambulance brought in right away, didn't tell those officers to calm their ass down and stop talking, didn't tell the officers to conduct themselves as professionals. None of that occurred. 
So it makes you look at it and say, well, who's leading people here? Is the blind leading the blind? Everybody is young. Everybody apparently was hired within the past two or three years. So these were all new faces, new to the police force, and no one of seniority is looking over them, mentoring them, monitoring them. So I believe that everyone should be fired. Those officers, those EMTs, the sergeant on the scene and the police chief because they all have a certain amount of accountability and culpability to this situation. There's an article that was posted where they found out about her history. Apparently, she used to work for the Atlanta Police Department and in that particular situation, she was fired. And guess, guess why? According to the New York Post, CJ Davis was fired in 2008 for botching a sex crimes investigation. Apparently, two detectives accused Davis of telling them not to investigate a person by the name of Terrell Marion Crane, who was married to the sergeant of the Atlanta Police Department, Tanya Crane. And this was after the police found photos of the husband with underage girls. And what happened later is that a federal grand jury indicted Terrell Crane on child pornography charges and he pled guilty on those charges, right? So in other words, CJ Davis tried to cover up a child pornography case because it affected one of her friend's husband. So this is supposed to show you who is the police chief of Memphis and how corrupt she is and also shows you how easily and how willing she is to cover things up. So again, if you want to, like, tr like Trump said, drain the swamp, you have to start from the top. And if you're the police chief, you are the leader. I don't care if you're a woman, because this is not a gender thing. This is not an attack on black women or women in general. This is about accountability. And this is about the lack of leadership. And CJ Davis has shown that she has no accountability and that she lacks the leadership in order to get this straightened out. Because I think that, yeah, she could fire the Scorpion Bennett and disband them. But that is not the problem here. The problem is that she created an environment that allowed these things to fester. She is responsible for it. I don't care if you think that she's just the, the figurehead and she's just a person that goes around speaking on, on matters. No, if you're a police chief, you're responsible for the administration, but also the operation of all divisions, whether that's patrol, whether that's investigations or even support services. So this is something that falls into her lap, not just to make sure that she fires and charges people, but also to make sure that she's held accountable for her own actions or lack thereof. So in closing, I have to be honest and say that it wasn't what I thought this was going to be as far as how the officials hyped up this video. I, I feel that the Ronnie King video uh, was much worse in the fact that they blatantly tried to beat the man in the head and pretty much kill him as opposed to this video where it seemed like they were trying to detain and arrest Tyree Nichols, but their depraved indifference after they got him in handcuffs and they just kept him there and they didn't really attend to him and they were just joking, laughing and smoking cigarettes and talking about what they just did, it made it worse. Now, the side of all, about all of this is the fact that there are many Tyree Nichols out there who have faced the same consequences, but they survived their beating. They survived the atrocity. And unfortunately, they don't have the benefit of a streetlight camera who catches everything. They don't have the benefit of the media and Benjamin Crump. So they won't get the exposure that they need to hold these people accountable. And that's really the sad part about all of this is that this is a common thing when it comes to policing. If you run and the police catch you, they're going to beat you. That's almost like an unspoken rule that many people who have either had multiple, multiple encounters with police or many people who have been involved in you know the underworld, they will tell you that if the police have to run and they catch you, especially if it's in a secluded area, they are going to beat you. And unfortunately, Terrell Nichols died of his injuries and this is the only reason why these plus police officers are being held accountable because he actually died because I doubt anything would have happened if he had survived because there were other complaints made by other people who received 
beatings as well too and nothing was done matter of fact one of the same police officers who are charged was one of the ones who someone else complained about only a few weeks or months before and nothing was done so this is just a reflection of where we are in society in regards to how we're policed there really needs to be an update on police training to account for different uh, variables especially when it comes to people with mental health issues but in this case again uh, there has to be some type of understanding and a change in culture that we're not just going to beat people uh, into a submission or into a pulp that's not what we're about and you have to understand that especially if there's no violent crime committed or there's no um, danger there's no reason for you to be someone like this and to try to take advantage of them when they're vulnerable with hands behind their back handcuffed right now the other thing about this as well too because the culture needs to change from the police side but also from the civilian side as well too. teach your children that if they are pulled over for police even if they are guilty of something do not run get arrested take the charge and then fight it in court with the lawyer because what too many people are doing is that they're running they're scared they don't want to go to jail they fear the consequences but here's the thing you end up like Tyree Nichols you end up like Rashad Brooks. You end up like so many other black men. And this is the sad reality. And this is something that you have to teach your children. Do not run. Take your charge like a man. Stand firm. And whatever it is that they throw at you, you will fight. And why? Because you as the parent will make sure you make a good living so that way you could afford the best lawyers possible and then guess what you do after when you win you sue the hell out of the police department the city and whoever else you need to sue but at least that way when you get that money you will be able to spend it with your son as opposed to your son being a martyr for you to become rich later on that is not the type of exchange that you want. That is not the type of sacrifice that Tyree Nichols would want to have made in his life. And I'm sure that as the parent, you would not want your child to make that sacrifice as well too, right? So that's just my two cents of this whole situation. You let me know how you feel about this. Again, this is after I've watched the video and all of the angles that have been made available. You tell me how you feel about it. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Until next time, part of my presence YouTube channel. Next move, best move. Peace.